The Sons of Katie Elder was a 1965 film directed by Henry Hathaway, and it starred John Wayne and Dean Martin. The story is about four adult sons of Katie Elder. John, played by John Wayne, who is famous or infamous as a professional gunman. Tom, played by Dean Martin, he's basically a professional gambler. And then there's Bud, played by Michael Anderson. He's the youngest brother, and he's still in school. And then the final brother is Matt, played by Earl Holloman, and he's an unsuccessful hardware dealer. But they end up reuniting in their hometown of Clearwater, Texas. All this happens in 1898 for their mother's funeral. They all kind of share regret that none of them lived up to their mother's high expectations for them. Now this movie actually marked the return of John Wayne to the big screen after he had had that cancerous lung removed just four months earlier. He still insisted on doing a lot of the stunts himself. He wanted to show the public that his illness hadn't slowed him down, but it had. He actually struggled during the filming of it, but he didn't want anybody else to know. It said that he almost caught pneumonia, and with two lungs, that's bad. With one lung, that's not a good deal at all. Now, before John Wayne signed on for the film in June of 1964, Charlton Heston was actually courted for this role of John Elder. The filming was originally to begin in October of 1964, but they had to delay all that until January of 1965 after they found out John Wayne had been diagnosed with lung cancer. Now, very early on, this film was to have been made in 1955 and star Burt Lancaster. At that time, John Sturgis was actually going to be the director of this film. They just couldn't put everything together at that time. One of the reasons was because Burt Lancaster felt that the story was just too routine. It's kind of interesting that George Kennedy recalled that he was pretty surprised when he saw John Wayne still smoking cigars during the filming of this, despite having undergone major surgery, although he had stopped smoking cigarettes. John Wayne's stunt double was actually used in this film quite a bit, and that was Chuck Robertson. He doubled for John Wayne in all the long horseback shots. And he also doubled for George Kennedy in the scene where John Elder hit Curly with an axe handle. It's kind of interesting that Earl Holloman later said that when you look at it and think about John Wayne, who was pretty up in age at the time of this shooting, and then you look at Dean Martin, and then you look at himself and Michael Anderson, who looked to be 16. All of them were playing brothers. And you have to say to yourself, what kind of woman is this Katie Elder? In the addition to Carl Swenson playing two separate roles, he plays the doctor and the bartender. There are two other uncredited actors that play dual roles too. The actor playing the train guard at the beginning of the movie is also seen later, this time he has a mustache on, as one of the Hastings gang. The same actor is seen as yet another character passed by Dean Martin near the stables towards the climax. And then there's the uncredited actor who plays the blacksmith. He's also seen again disguised with a mustache as a member of the posse. William H. Wright picked up a copy of Life of the Marlows by Glenn Shirley in a Los Angeles bookstore around 1953. He thought that this would make a really good basis for a good Western. He paid members of the Marlowe family $1,000 each for the rights to make it into a screenplay. But when the movie was finally made 12 years later, the film's plot had drastically changed, and Talbot Jennings was credited with writing the script. The outdoor locations for the movie were filmed in Durango in North Mexico, 
and the opening credits scene as the locomotive travels a narrow stream canyon valley on the famed Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad in Colorado. The train depot scenes were filmed at Perkinsville, Arizona, and it's kind of interesting that that same train depot was used as Gold City near the end of How the West Was Won. Now, there's some confusion that the name Katie Elder actually comes from Mary Catherine Cummings, or better known as Big Nose Kate. She was a Western icon and sometimes companion of Doc Holliday. Now, this can't be the same Kate because Holliday's Katie Elder lived until 1940 and just can't possibly be the one in the film. The film was roughly based on the 1888 true story of the five Marlowe brothers. And a matter of fact, Marlowe, Oklahoma is actually named after the Marlowe family. The definition between where fiction stops and the truth starts is really hard to gauge on this film. Like so many films, they veer off in directions just to make the quality of the picture better. And you really don't know how much truth is involved in it. Now there's one part of the film that actually should have probably been cut out, but it's not. When John Wayne punches Dean Martin in the breakfast ruckus, he clearly strikes his hand on the open door and he lets out an authentic ouch and he grabs his hand. They actually liked this so much that they just left it in. Now, Dean Martin actually felt that he looked out of place in this character role. Since he was an Italian-American, he felt he didn't fit in with the rest of the elders. Now, there was a lot of talk that Henry Hathaway was terrible to work with in this movie, and also in a lot of other movies. He's been known to just reduce strong men to tears in almost every picture he made. Somehow, I don't see him doing that with John Wayne. But you hear the lesser characters talk, and they didn't like him at all. Now, the same wanted poster of the man in the top hat smoking a cigar, you see this used in the movie El Dorado in 1967. And this film also starred John Wayne. Now, John Wayne did a lot to help other actors that had struggled at some point. And that was the case with Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper actually credits John Wayne with saving his career. Hopper had some pretty bad behavior when he was younger, and he couldn't find work in Hollywood. And strictly because he was the son-in-law of Margaret Sullivan, John Wayne hired him for a role in the film. The musical score of this movie was composed by Elmer Bernstein, who would also go on to score True Grit, who was done by the same director and also starred John Wayne. Johnny Cash sang a song in 1965 that was called The Sons of Katie Elder, and that was written by Elmer Bernstein and Ernie Sheldon. But despite the title and the composer, it wasn't featured in the movie. Now, it's said that John Wayne and Dean Martin and Dennis Hopper spent a lot of time together after shooting was over. They went out drinking quite a bit. They loved to socialize and chew the fat and talk about the film. Now, Tommy Kirk was originally scheduled to be in this movie and play one of the brothers. He was quickly replaced by Michael Anderson Jr. Now the reason that Tommy Kirk was fired from the film was that he was arrested for possession of marijuana at a party on Christmas Eve in 1964. There were photographs that were published in the paper showing him wearing police handcuffs and these actually made the front pages and this started his downward spiral of problems. He was really well known for his Disney movies like Old Yeller, The Shaggy Dog, Swiss Family Robinson. This guy was a popular young actor, but this drug arrest caused him many problems. The district attorney's office actually refused to file the complaint against him on the marijuana charge. But the city attorney's office, they actually filed an illegal drug charge 
because officers found a vial of barbiturates in his car. The charge was eventually dismissed in early January when Kirk's attorney established that the barbiturate had been prescribed by a physician. However, the damage to Kirk's career had already been done. He initially blamed the town of Los Angeles being full of a whole bunch of right-wingers that were intolerant and they were cruel. And this was his statement to the press. He later went on to say that he richly deserved to be fired by the studios because of his irresponsible behavior. He came to understand that they were right. He eventually got over his drug addiction problem, and he actually gave up acting in the mid-70s. It said that he worked as a waiter and a chauffeur, and then he actually went into a carpet cleaning business in the San Fernando Valley. He once stated that he made a lot of money, and he spent it all. That he had no bitterness and no regrets. He said he did what he did, and that he wasn't the boy next door. He said that he could pretend to be for a few hours in front of the camera, but he couldn't live it in real life. Once released, this film was widely criticized for being too long and moving too slow. The film is kind of uneven at times, and there's a very shaky third act with a poor ending. Still, I think that John Wayne does some of the finest acting that I've seen him do. John Wayne never disappoints. Take a look back at the Sons of Katie Elder. I think you'll be glad you did. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.